I am Roxanne Lawson, and I'm the youngest daughter of the Lawsons. I'm Melanie Lawson, and I'm the oldest daughter of uh, Bill and Audrey Lawson. And I'm Cheryl Lawson, and I'm in the middle, and we're here to talk about you. Right. Let's go into your first memory, your earliest memory of WABC. Well, probably I'm the best person to talk about that. My first memory of WABC was it was in our house. We lived in a two-story house over very close to Texas Southern University. At the time, there was a railroad track there. And we could hear people downstairs on Sunday mornings talking. We didn't know exactly what they were doing, but they were some of, the, uh, some of my parents' friends, people that we knew, but we didn't quite understand why they were meeting every Sunday at the living room. One of the things that I remember is how our small community group, uh, when we first started the church, it was just a few dozen families and a little at a time. We as young people, because I was born in 57, so the church was I'm only five years old when the church was born. I remember that small community growing first, a few families and then a few dozen families and then a few hundred families, but how we were such a close community, almost like in biblical times where we kind of you know, knew each other's homes, we visited each other, we knew their phone numbers. It was a small community of faith, and that was really important for me. I was just born when the church got started. No, I wasn't yet here. I was in Mama's stomach. So I don't have many, I don't have those early memories, but my earliest memories are, I think I remember toddling around the table, building the bulletins, the church bulletins on Saturdays. Yeah, because we were free child laborers. <laughs> we always had to help with the bulletins. Um, well, that's what you get being a PK. Exactly. <laughs> And a really big deal was when we moved into the white church, the white frame church here at uh, Wheeler and Scott Street. And I think we thought we'd really moved uptown because now we had a place to meet instead of our living room. Uh, and I don't remember the exact year. I just remember how proud my parents were to finally have a place, a church that we could all go to. You touched a little bit about community. So I want to talk about how Wheeler Avenue has been a pillar in the community with Matthew 25. So first, Matthew 25 wasn't called that back in the early years. It was called Missions and Mercy. And there was always a commitment that Daddy had in the church's leadership to reach back out and to help others. Um, there were uh, probably decades when we were maybe the only church in our community, pretty much across the city, that was saving families from eviction or families that needed medicine, money, or being able to get gasoline to take a trip from you know, Houston, Louisiana. We were the place where so many people came. Um, it was odd because what would happen is every Sunday there was a second offering and those offerings weren't used for church operations. They were dedicated to give back into the community. Um, there have been some times, you know, major hurricanes, major events that have occurred across the years when the city knows. We don't go to the big churches in, you know, kind of uptown. We go to Wheeler Avenue for help because we've always been there to be able to support families. It is uncommon because it's so normal for churches to take money in and simply keep it. And Wheeler has always been a giving church. Uh, and then the other thing I'll say is, I think that there were times over the decades when there was fear because my dad is always the one who would hand money out if somebody came to the church at nine o'clock at night, the Missions of Mercy was closed. They caught him because he was preparing a sermon or finishing a meeting. He would give them money. And that was always something that people thought, you lost and you shouldn't do that. That's so dangerous. But God looked after him and looked after those dollars and has protected the church all these years. Even though we are sometimes right where the most dangerous people are who need the most help. And I can remember a story. Uh, my dad would always carry a briefcase with him. And there were times when he would walk back and forth from the church to our house, especially when we were living closer to the church. And uh, usually he had money in his, in his briefcase because he would hand it out to people who needed it. So he's walking home one day and some kid comes up to him and points a gun at him and say, give me that briefcase. I know you have money in there. So sure enough, Daddy stopped, he reached in his briefcase, gave the kid off the money. And when he runs off, he said, thank you, Reverend Lawson. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously people knew who he was. They knew he had money and you know, of course, my dad didn't call the police or do anything like that. He just let it run off with whatever he'd gotten, a couple of hundred dollars. But it was kind of a perfect example of how we reached out into the community and in many ways the community uh, embraced us, even when they were holding you up on the street. Yeah.